Good morning, good morning. Another beautiful sunny day here in North America. DeFi IoT. Hey, let's talk about today the grand giant of Amazon versus the David of the cloud storage, SC Prime and Exa Miner. You know, the difference between the, the giant Amazon and SC Prime is going to be this relayer and how it, the data storage is decentralized. I think to understand those, this though, you're going to have to understand what the relayer does and what it is. And I think this is key to the whole SC Prime Exit Miner success. So bear with this video today, please. Uh, it's kind of it's, it's explained by a technician. And, um, <laughs> uh, but you're going to get the nuts and bolts of how this relayer is actually going to work with the actual dashboard and with the boxes, and the boxes he refers to as the Exit Miners. So let's get into this video right now and dig in deep from the Las Vegas NAB show the key element to compete with Amazon, the relayer. Let's talk about that today. So at the Amazon show, at the Amazon show, the NAB show, I want to call it the Amazon show because they have this huge, big display, right? Huge. And lots of people there. <laughs> That's like flocking, gathering in this great and spacious building. And... Um, the little one right next to Amazon was SC Prime and XM Miner. But yet they were consistent. They were consistent and they pick up off that flow. It's going to be a work in progress for SC Prime and XM Miner. It's not going to happen tomorrow. And they're going against the Goliath of, of you know, cloud data storage. But the key is this relayer. And I think this is important, as you saw in the videos, this relayer is the vision of Kenneth, who's the who Ken, who's the, the CEO and president and CEO of the, of, the, of the company. And this is something that they he envisioned and, and they developed over a series of years. And now it's come to fruition in the market. Now we were told originally they were they were going to put it on sale last Tuesday, but for some reason I wasn't there on Wednesday. For some reason they decided that's going to go to next week. So as you get this video. Um, this video will be coming out on Sunday, um, I believe. And so it, it will be going on sale sometime this week. I to pay attention to it. Bear with us in this. Uh, I think it's a little technical, but I think it's really important if you really want to understand what the difference is between Amazon and AC Prime and why we feel AC Prime has a niche and has the opportunity, this project, to be very, very successful. And not just in XM miners, but in very possibly getting involved in that token, the SCP token right now, which I want to do another video on if my voice ever comes back. I'm still struggling with this. I'm now doing a nebulizer to try to see what's, what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong. I just can't get my voice back. Anyway, so let's jump into this. Bear with us on it. It's, it's a, you know, a little bit longer video, maybe 20 minutes today. But just please listen to this and listen intently. Grab a herbal tea or whatever and sit down and or your coffee, whatever you're doing. Just listen to this. You might only listen a couple, two, three times over. But this will be the difference between Amazon going forward in the future and SC Prime. Now, look at what's going on right now with the, the, the Twitter takeover with Elon Musk. How many of these people are fleeing Twitter now, crying that Elon Musk is going to come in and reinstate all these these, this freedom of speech, and they're against that. For whatever reason, they're against that. And maybe some of you are too. I don't know. That's sad. If you are, then you don't understand what crypto is all about. Crypto is about that freedom of market, freedom of expression, freedom to be able to be what you want to be and achieve what you want to achieve. That's where this is at. When it's constrained, anything is constrained, centralized, that's not freedom. Though you might say, well, we control it so other people can have opportunities. Well, yeah, but what about the people who you don't want to have those opportunities anymore? What about the people you're controlling and restraining, constraining? That, that puts them in a minority group now. Or actually, a majority minority, so to speak. With all this coming down the road, you're going to see a need for more decentralization. Joe Biden creates a truth ministry. Give me a break. That's what they have in Venezuela. That's communist. 
That is complete fascist communist. Excuse me, but it is. That's on the left. That's a police state. And what I see here going forward right now, what 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 is offering the SE Prime and the, the exit miner is going to allow that that market of of being able to decentralize and store your data in a more secure way where somebody's not going to be in bed with the governments giving your data away. And that is huge for even you who don't understand right now. I know most of you do. I'm talking about the person who might just trip across the video and just go, "Ah, I don't know, I don't know. But even right now you might think, "Ah, I don't know, but wait till they take your data and use it against you. Then you're going to want to run to where someplace it can be stored and only you have access to it. And that's where SC Prime comes in. That's why crypto is exploding. And that's why I see SC Prime riding that wave with their own niche. I think they're on something good here. Let's go in and pay close attention to this relayer because this is the key to SC Prime competing with the great giant of Amazon. Jump into this right now. Days ago, sometimes you, just limit you, can do, you can do tiny sizes if you want. It's something that's been surprisingly difficult because uh, handling uh, uh, tiny files uh, is more of a technical challenge. Uh, I've been in technology for years. Yeah, I mean, here we are. I mean, on the side, whatever application. <laughs> There's, you can use that for two different purposes. There's an upload cache and a local cache. 
the purpose of the upload cache is often in enterprise and data centers, your internal network will be faster than your uh, external, like your line out to the internet, right? So if you dedicate, let's say, two of these disks to be upload cache, then anything that's on your network can upload at the full speed to the relayer, and then overnight the relayer will send it out uh, like out to the internet at the lower speed. But that way you're able to get it off your machine and into the cloud as soon as possible. And in that example, you could potentially use the other two disks for the local cache. So for there, you could have uh, your most frequently accessed files, all the, th all the things that you're accessing like daily. Instead of having to go out to the network and pull those pieces and provide it to you every time you want to access that file, it keeps it on the local drive, so that way it uses less bandwidth, uh, and it's able to serve it on the spot because it's already local. So the performance is better, it's cheaper. Uh, but for different workloads, obviously, you would want a different balance. So if you're doing cold storage and backups, you would want probably more upload cache because those tend to be large and not frequently accessed. But if you're doing more hot data, uh, you might want to dedicate more uh, local cache so you're not having to use as much bandwidth going out to the network. Also in the, in the console here, Using the same login that you can control your relayers, you can also access uh, any examiners, which are the storage pods uh, that are linked to your account. So from here, you can see like, the, the wallet. So the significance of that, the customers themselves, the businesses, the enterprises that are interested in using this for cloud storage, uh, they only have to pay in their build-in dollars. However, under, under the hood, to facilitate all of the networking and the, the contracting that has to go on, uh, there's a like layer one blockchain in, in use. So the storage pods themselves are contracted out in the native token for that blockchain, which is a single-use utility token uh, called the SCP. So the, since the customers, the end users of the relayer are billed in dollars, uh, the storage providers receive SCP token. Uh, it's us as the company uh, who are paid the dollars. We convert and we manage all the blockchain layer uh, transformations and, and contracting so that the end customer never has to worry about or use or think about uh, any of this, like the utility token or the blockchain layer stuff. It's all managed uh, in our backend and then builds in predictable amounts and in dollars. So from here, if you were in the storage pod, uh, this is what you would see. Uh, you can see from here, uh, like the history of different contracts. So these might be, each one of these might be with a different relayer. Uh, you can see your stats monitor. So from here, you can see your specific unit, what is the uptime, uh, I can see the history, so I can see when I had downtime, uh, that sort of thing. I can see how much I've earned this month, the amount of total capacity I have. So I might have 40 terabytes available, and here I might have two and a half terabytes used. So from here, you might have noticed that uh, the uptimes are largely in the 95 to 100 percent range. In fact, if I go over to the status panel, I believe, for active providers, I can see across the whole network the average uptime is 97.3%, which in the context of data centers is not great. In fact, that would be pretty low. That implies a couple hours offline a month or a week. Uh, however, the way that we achieve performance and scalability and availability is by this innovation. So the relayer itself, instead of allocating one whole set of data and parity, uh, the parity is how we achieve the redundancy. Instead of allocating one whole set to just one provider until you have all your pieces allocated, each relayer is contracting out to like hundreds, like this. If each of these were a provider, this could go off the screen and out the building this way, which allows you to have the upload performance and the download performance of all of these together. Because each provider is largely on a consumer line uh, or like a residential internet, which might not have the fastest speeds. But the sum of them together can feed your relayer to incredible performance levels. And since each one only has a small uh, portion of the total shards, then if each one becomes unavailable, you still have the level of redundancy across all of the rest of them. So that's how using only 
providers that have maybe 97% uptime, by parallelizing across all of them, you're able to hit huge availability numbers. So actually using the relayer, uh, if, if you go to allocate a new relayer to your account, you have the option of either downloading it and running it on your own hardware, or you can use a cloud relayer. So what I demonstrated earlier was it running on this machine. How, how you actually use it is the S3 protocol, the S3 storage protocol. So if I were to go over to Duplicati, for example, in the storage configuration setup, I would choose the S3 compatible protocol. I would provide it with the URL that's created when the relayer is created. So that's the address. And then the access, is, and, uh, the access ID and keys that are created as well. So that's how you actually interact with and are able to use the relayer. So for example, this is a relayer uh, that we're running in a data center, or like we're running uh, in the cloud. And from it, from here, I'm able to access it. And I can see, for example, here's a bucket that we created called video. From here, I'm able to download. I'm able to download any of these files. The speeds aren't great, but that's because in this booth, it's shared bandwidth with other booths. Uh, if we were in you know, higher performance, better networking situation, this, would, this download would come through very quickly. Uh, that's an example of using Minio. You can use any application like Veeam, Commvault, uh, for example, WinSCP, which we have here. Uh, once again, S3 protocol, give it the host name, access keys that are provided when it's created. Those are your credentials, log in, now your files are here. It's that simple. It works like a normal cloud. The relayer is the one mapping it out to the network, distributing it around the world. So that way, you're in full control of your data the whole time, since your relayer is the only one who has the map of the different shards to the providers. You're in full control of your data the whole time. We, as a corporation, even though we're handling all the billing, we cannot access your data at all. Only you and your machine have that map. So the way you would sign up, exapro.net, you would just create the account. When you log in, you would be dropped in the console. From here, head over to billing. Uh, keep an eye out for gift codes, by the way. We're going to be providing gift codes that allow for a couple terabytes of storage for a month. We are encouraging people to try out the Relayer in parallel with their existing cloud usage uh, and compare, uh, see how it works. I think you guys will be impressed. Who are some of your customers? Large customers? So this is actually our launch event. So in the, over the last 12 months, we've been uh, we've had a number of kind of previewers and trialers. Uh, so some of them come from backgrounds in like cold storage and archival. Uh, so that's one of our guys. We have someone who's like a senior engineer at Uber who, in his spare time, is testing out tons of stuff because he can see all the different ways this can be applied. And we're largely targeting uh, the like MSP and CSP market because those are people who would be able to. They have access to tons of uh, data that they need to allocate somewhere. They could spin up these relayers, provide high performance, high availability tiers to their customers, be in full control of where the data is allocated, uh, and of course, at rates much lower than centralized and high expense uh, tiers like AWS. We hope you enjoyed this segment of our video with DeFi IoT. Remember, we're not professional advisors. We do this as a business, as a hobby, and we study, we experiment, and we want to share it with you. If you can get some benefit from this, great. What we do is we go out, we purchase with our own money, and we experiment to see what true results are. We want you to be able to share in our experiences so you don't have to lose like we have. If you can win where we've won, fantastic. Remember to do your own research and your own homework. It's very important before you make any decisions. We will see you in our next video.